Hey everyone, my name is Vishwas and welcome to what I hope is the first of many AI related videos on this channel. If you're curious about building your own AI powered applications, but don't know where to start, let me tell you you're not alone. AI powered apps are all the rage these days, but getting started can seem overwhelming. That is where I come in. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the OpenAI API to build a vanilla JavaScript app that responds to your prompts. Think of it as a very simple AI assistant. This video will provide you with a solid foundation to kickstart your journey in building your own AI powered applications. The first step to working with OpenAI API is to obtain an API key. If you haven't already, head to platform.openai.com slash sign up and create an account. Once you're logged in, go to your profile, view API keys, and create a new secret key. Give it a name and click on Create Secret Key. Make sure to copy and securely store this API key as it will be required for accessing OpenAI's API services. Once you have your API key for step two, in VS Code, create a folder called AI JavaScript, and within this folder, create an index.html file and an index.js file. The HTML file will contain the HTML and CSS for our application, while a JavaScript file will contain the functions to communicate with the OpenAI API and update the UI with the fetched response. Next, for step three, let's build the user interface for the application. Since HTML and CSS are technologies we are familiar with, I am going to copy paste the necessary code to save us some time. Please take a look at the link in the pinned comments if you want to pause the video and do the same. Now the UI is built using HTML and Tailwind CSS, but please feel free to use a styling solution of your choice. You can write simple CSS classes or use something like Bootstrap. Completely up to you. But let me walk you through a few parts in the code I've copy pasted. In the head section, we link to the Tailwind CSS CDN and index.js. In the body section, we have a title that says streaming OpenAI completions in JavaScript, an input element to accept the user's prompt, a button to start generating the AI response, and a button to stop the generation process. Above the input element, we have an empty section where the content retrieved from the API will be populated. The section has an ID of result text. Now please make a note that cdn.tailwindcss.com should not be used in production, but is suitable for quick prototyping like our AI Assistant app. Moving on to step four, let's start our application by setting up a dev server. If you're using VS Code, you can install the live server extension, which will allow you to open the HTML file with a live server. So go to extensions, search for live server and install it. After installation, simply right click the HTML file and select open with live server. You should now be able to view the UI without any issues. We have the title, a label that says generated text, empty space where the AI response will be populated, an input for the prompt, a generate and a stop button. Now you might be wondering why we need a dev server instead of just double clicking on the HTML file to open it in the browser. The reason is that fetch requests, which we will be using in our JavaScript file, do not work with the file protocol due to security restrictions. Therefore, having a dev server is essential to properly run our application. Now that we have the HTML in place, let's proceed with the JavaScript code. For step five, 
Let's start by defining constants for OpenAI API endpoint and the key. Const API key is equal to a string, and we paste in the key that we created a few minutes ago. The API endpoint you can find under API reference, chat, under the heading, create chat completion. Copy and paste it. Again, I want to reiterate that you should generate your own API key as the one shown in this video will not work for you. For step six, query the DOM elements and get hold of the prompt input, the generate and stop buttons, and the result section. So const prompt input is equal to document.getElementById and the ID of the input is prompt input. Similarly, we have generate button with the same ID, stop button with the same ID, and result text with the same ID. The IDs correspond to the ID attribute of all the HTML elements. For step seven, handle the click and enter events to submit the prompt to the chat API. So generate button dot add event listener. The event is click, and we're going to call a function called generate. Similarly, prompt input dot add event listener. The event is key up. We specify a callback function, and if event dot key is equal to enter, we call the generate function. The OpenAI completion request should be triggered on click of the generate button or when the user presses the enter key when the prompt input is in focus. We execute a function called generate, which we will define next. For step eight, we will write the crux of this application. We will define the generate function, which will establish a connection with the OpenAI API endpoint and generate a completion for the given prompt input value. Const generate, and this is an async function. Within the function, we're going to begin with a try catch block. Within the try block, we begin by making a fetch request to the OpenAI API endpoint. So const response is equal to await fetch. The first argument is the API URL, which is our constant. The second argument is the options object. We specify method as post, headers, which is an object with content type set to application slash JSON and authorization set to bearer, followed by the API key. Again, our constant. Without this, the request will fail. The final option we specify, the body of the post request. We set this to json.stringify, an object, and the object contains model, which is going to be GPT 3.5 Turbo and the prompt message that needs to be sent to OpenAI for completion. The format for specifying the prompt is as follows. Array with an object, role is the key set to user, and content is the key set to prompt input dot value. Prompt input is our text field. This code will fetch the completion for the given prompt. Let's convert the response into a JSON format. Const data is equal to await response.json. Let's log data to the console. For the catch block, we receive error as parameter, 
and we log it to the console. I'm going to move the event listeners to the bottom. Let's head to the browser and test this out. You can enter any prompt you want to, but I am going to keep it simple for the demo. My prompt is three word sentence. Click generate. And we see the data logged in the console. The completion itself though is nested deep inside the object. Within data, we have choices, which is an array of objects. At zeroth position, we have an object with a message property. This is an object with a content property. And this content is the completion from OpenAI API. Let's log it to the console instead of data. So data dot choices of zero dot message dot content. Let's head to the browser and test this out. The prompt is three word sentence. I'm going to press enter this time. And we have the response, I am here. Of course, you might see a different response. But that completes step number eight. For step nine, let's update the UI with the response. To display the completion in the UI, we need to assign this log statement value to the inner text of the result element. So result text dot inner text is equal to data dot choices of zero dot message dot content. Let's head to the browser and test this out. Once again, three word sentence is the prompt. Click on generate. And this time, we see the response in the UI. I am busy. We have successfully integrated the OpenAI API. But we are not quite done. For the 10th and final step, let's improve the user experience of our tiny assistant. First, if no prompt has been filled in by the user, we don't make the OpenAI API call. So if there is no prompt input dot value, let's alert, please enter a prompt and return. Next, when the fetch request is in progress, let's disable the generate button and add a loading text to indicate the fetch request is being processed. So generate button dot disabled is equal to true. So we disable the generate button and we update the result text to the string generating. For the next improvement, let's display an error message to the user if there was an error in our try block. So within the catch block, result text dot inner text is equal to error occurred while generating. Finally, irrespective of try or catch block being executed, we need to enable the generate button. Disabled is equal to false. Let's head to the browser and test this out. This time, I'm going to enter the prompt 20 word sentence. I want you to closely observe the generating text indicator in the result section as well as the generate button being disabled. Click generate and we see the button is disabled. The loading indicator was also displayed while the completion was being fetched. We have our chat completion also working as expected. So these are the 10 steps you need to integrate the OpenAI API in a vanilla JavaScript project. To summarize, build the UI, to accept a prompt, make a post request using that prompt to the chat completion endpoint, update the UI with the received completion. These are the steps to get started with OpenAI in JavaScript. 
At this point, I'm guessing you might have a couple of questions. First, you might be wondering about the title, Streaming OpenAI Completions. Second, you might be wondering about the stop button. What exactly is its purpose? Third, you might have noticed that the completion process takes a bit of time, especially for longer completions, and is not as fast as ChatGPT completions. Now, these are great questions to address in part two of this topic on the OpenAI API in vanilla JavaScript. Join me in the next video where we will learn how to stream OpenAI completions similar to ChatGPT and implement the stop button functionality to bail out from a completion. Thank you for watching, and please do consider subscribing to the channel for more beginner friendly content on AI. I'll see you in the next one.